Hello everyone, so I'm here today to talk about a novel that I finally just read and finished, which was Anna Karenina, 800 pages of Leo Tolstoy giving me the most entertaining soap opera I have ever read and seen in my entire life. Despite popular belief, this book isn't as difficult or as unapproachable as its reputation precedes. In fact, it's written in a very simple and straightforward manner, um, and I recommend that most people get over this fear of approaching classic literature and really just dive into it. I ultimately believe that most classic literature, especially Tolstoy, um, can be enjoyed by the average person. However, it is the details are honestly meticulous and you can dive into it and really analyze it paragraph per paragraph should you choose to do so. But of course, it's not a necessary read. I don't have a degree in literature and yet I was able to enjoy this book. One of my favorite books of all time is War and Peace. And so really do not fear classic literature. If that's one way I want to start this video, have no fear. Anna Karenina has two sides to it. On the outside of the book, it is about family. It's about this woman and her story. Um, and it is about Levin, another character that she, her family is connected to in a sort of way that takes you down this path of humanity and what it is like to love, to have affection, to fear, to lose things, um, to have uncertainty and bravery and emotions. And basically, it's a story about what makes people people within a family dynamic, which of course, as we all know, is usually somewhat dysfunctional, whether it be minor or major dysfunction. There is no such thing as the perfect family. So on the outside, we see a story about love and forgiveness, but there are plenty of underlying themes within the book which make it so much fun to really study uh, should you choose so, and you probably will at the end of it. We're talking about uh, modernization, which is a topic that is still very important today, westernization, feminism, politics, um, and I honestly just dove right into it and enjoy it so, so much. Um, basically, one of the topics that I wanted to talk about westernization, is it a loss of culture or convenience? Tolstoy created this book so that we may see Anna Karenina's lifestyle, which is very wealthy, very affluent, and a bit indulgent. And we also get to see Levin, another main character in the story, and his life rejecting his noble status and living in farmland. Um, basically, what this story is about, and I'll show you here, is this family. <laughs> this is the Leo Tolstoy universe. It's something that I did when I started reading this novel, and I suggest that you try to do it as well. Leo Tolstoy's stories involve many, many characters. You're not reading about the main heroine or hero. You're reading about a universe, a Leo Tolstoy universe. So this is going to help you follow along as the characters progress in Anna Karenina, which is very organically. It's easy to follow and it's easy to add on characters to your list. So get a big white sheet of paper and start adding them as they come along. It's going to help you not only with the characters and how they develop and who is who, but because in Russian literature there are very difficult names, which is another thing that I wanted to describe to you. In Russia, People use three names. It's not like us. My name, for example, I could be uh, Amy Anna Bates, let's say. That's going a little Downton Abbey, but whatever. Um, so you would have your first name, your last name, your middle name, and your last name. Your middle name is treated like your first name, it's just a representation of who you are, but in Russia, you have your first name, which people call you by informally, let's say it was Anna. Your middle name is a patronymic name, which means you take your father's name and you make it feminine or masculine, and that's your middle name. Your last name, finally, would be whatever last name you have at the moment, whether married or not. Now, let's say we took this character, uh, Amy Anna Bates, and her father was... Uh, Let's think of a male name, Michael. So 
it will be Amy, Amy Michaela Bates. And so in Russian literature, you have three names that people can call you by, your first name, your patronymic, your surname, um, and a nickname. Uh, they have lots of little nicknames for affection. Uh, even though they do have a lot of regular common names, they have nicknames for affection. And that can confuse you because you're going to be looking at a character being called three to four different names throughout a novel. So it's going to help you a lot to carry a little chart and write out their full name. And if you hear their nickname, write that down too. Trust me, it'll save you a lot of confusion. Now, I do recommend this book to everyone. I consider it a 10 out of 10. And honestly, there's just something about Leo Tolstoy that brings you face to face with life, with your fears, with your greatest loves, uh, with just troubles and things that might happen in life or extreme moments and you might not know how to deal with them. You will not be alone with the Leo Tolstoy book and you it will help you through it because it's so deep. It's so majestic. I, I loved it. Absolutely recommend it to everyone. Now, Tolstoy has an incredible understanding of what's it like to be a person at any age um, and that broad understanding will help anyone relate to this literature. I will say that anyone reading a book this long with, with this many characters will relate to one person more than another or will find something more interesting than something else and everyone's individual perspective I believe is what inherently makes this novel so great. There is so much that you can choose from to say, wow, that's what it's like to be that. That's why I do that. That's why they do that. That's what it means when people do that. It is a book about people and about the human condition. So to briefly analyze this story for someone, to summarize it for someone who has never read it, Anna Karenina is one of the main people in this book and it starts out with her brother's story and then we are introduced to the brother's wife. The reason why they are important is because this story actually follows Anna Karenina and a man named Levin. Levin is in love with one of the sisters related to Anna Karenina's sister-in-law. So it starts out with her brother, who is in love with this and married to this woman, Dolly. Dolly's sister is Kitty, and she's one of the characters that Levin is in love with. Now Anna falls in love with a young army official and his name is Vronsky. Vronsky at the beginning of the novel is courting, courting Kitty. She has recently made her debut into society and so the drama begins. Um, as you know, Anna Karenina does reject her life and follow a life with Vronsky. They have an illegitimate child. Um, she leaves her life behind, her husband, and then the drama that ensues within the whole family and society begins. A lot of people have mentioned the idea that Leo Tolstoy might be sexist. In my point of view, he actually wrote the story to show us why he isn't sexist, and I find that incredible. The story starts off with Anna Karenina's brother committing infidelity, and then she goes on to commit infidelity. Yet we're never brought to believe that it's because they were raised or it's their personalities, simply because I believe um, and I'm sure that you'll find we are meant to see what an infidel, <laughs> infidelity is supposed to look like with a man committing it and with a woman committing it. Her brother has ultimate freedom and continues committing uh, acts of infidelity throughout his life and it never seems to really affect his home life and he gets to have everything that he has ever worked for and still basically live. Now she is driven to suicide. Big spoiler. So... <laughs> we get to see exactly what that's like. And I strongly believe that Leo Tolstoy was to find that very unfair. Um, so definitely it's a novel for feminists who want to appreciate this time period. Again, we also are gonna spend a lot of time in the country in this book because Levin is a country man. Um, and for some reason, people feel the need to complain about that because they say it takes away from the drama but I found it absolutely necessary because on the outside while this might look like the ultimate soap opera it is talking about what I mentioned before modernization uh, westernization the loss of cultural values it puts in question society's nobility the question of nobility um, the question of politics and so forth 
Now, I do believe that this was very important because Anna is always related to the scene where she jumps in front of the train and commits suicide. Ultimate spoiler, I know, but you watch this. Um, and I think that modernization was the ultimate death of her. However, it was also the birth of a new time, or the hopefully a new time, where people can live, where a woman can divorce her husband and still retain custody of her child. Although the message is, according to Tolstoy, we don't want your westernization and your modernization. We miss all culture. We want to embrace us as Russia. And I thought that that was very, very well put. Like I said, you can read this novel and ignore all of the underlying themes and enjoy it for what it is on the outside, or you can really dive into it chapter, chapter after chapter and enjoy the nitty gritty. At the end of the day, you might ask if I am a fan of Anna Karenina, to which I am gladly say I am not. I actually found Vronsky extremely interesting, though I wasn't the biggest fan. I thought that he had a sense of entitlement and that he, you know, was just looking for the next toy that he could play with and throw away. However, I did change my mind towards the end of the book to see how human he was and how fragile he became because of Anna's loss. And I did see that humanize him so much and I liked him much more, just the same way as I ultimately felt about Alexei Alexandrovich, which is Anna Karenina's husband, who comes across as cold and calculating. However, I always found that there was a bit of sensitivity, warmth, and pride. And usually where there is pride, there are a lot of sensitive emotions underneath that with, into which someone uses pride to cover that soft side. So I found him extremely interesting. Interestingly enough, Tolstoy purposely made these characters as ambiguous as possible in comparison to everyone else. So I also like to mention that if you're going to start a novel of this size, if you're going to start a classic, especially with one that has as many characters as Anna Karenina, take notes. I have a notebook where I took notes and I'm able to undersee who I could able to see who I connected with what themes I connected with, what I recognized, and something else I suggest you do afterwards is go to Sparknotes and read the very bare summary of the story, and you will see how much you actually indulged in a novel, and you will see that you took away much more than a brief summary could ever show you, and you will really fall in love with classic literature. Um, one other thing that I would mention do a little bit of research of the time period so that you may understand how these people lived and what they went through and it will definitely help you find that they are more relatable because you'll be able to understand their situation more um, and really just put yourself in their place. Otherwise something might feel way too foreign such as nobility and all of the status.